Okay, it's just preparing to live stream. It'll buffer, I think. Yeah. I'm not panicking at all. So guys, we'll probably just talk a bit whilst people sort of jump on. So I'll just talk about random things. So we don't waste any of our jewels. It's obviously recorded for 30 days. So people will be able to listen to it anyway for 30 days. Okay, we're on now. Right, Nos Faisal, good evening, everyone. Oh, pronounce off. It feels like more afternoon, I must say. Um, Thank you everybody for joining uh, one of my Facebook, uh, Freeport Facebook Lives. I've had many of these now and they've gone down really, really well. And we've got some fantastic uh, guests on tonight, uh, Pradera and his team from MSpark. But before I introduce them, I just wanted just to give a bit of, bit of a, a, a recap. Um, I'm on recess now and uh, that doesn't mean as an MP that we stopped working. Um, I was at um, Lime York um, Village Hall this morning. I had a fantastic panel there with the mayor of Hollyhead, Adrian and her wife, Nia. Um, they did fantastic toasters there. Then I went into my office in Hollyhead to catch up with my team. Uh, popped into Raymond's The Butchers and obviously uh, Ian Ashworth at the, uh, at the post office at the chocolate box. And um, then I've been down to Newbra. I've just had a meeting regarding uh, Freeports and the Freeport governance. And then tomorrow I'll be catching up with Morlice and the team there, uh, along with Janet Finch Saunders, who's the Conservative MS for Abba Conway. I've got a meeting regarding the uh, natural, National Lottery Community Fund to try and get funding for Hollyhead Hotspurs. And then I'm going to the uh, Menai Bridge Cricket Club. I sponsor several football and uh, rugby clubs and bowls clubs and cricket clubs across the island. So I'll be going to see the Menai uh, Bridge uh, team. But tonight is my, my Facebook Live and I would love to welcome uh, Pader and his, his team. They have one of the most fantastic buildings um, on the island. So uh, Pader, perhaps you'd like to introduce yourself, um, uh, Lois and Emily, please. I will, absolutely. Evening, everyone. I'm Fideri Akrishat. I'm the Managing Director here at Menai Science Park, or Spark, as we like to call ourselves. Um, so the, the Science Park, for anyone who's watching, has never been over. You're very welcome to come over. It's a fantastic cafe here and by Beckles Morn, the, the bakery in Gaylaway, to start off with. So come over. We've got some fantastic coffee and do engage with us. We're really eager to um, engage with the community of Ankles here and an opportunity like tonight to communicate with uh, the electorate of Angus is fantastic for us. But apart from fantastic coffee, what we offer is uh, hopefully some innovation, some fantastic companies who are looking to grow and create some great jobs for people to stay on the island or, or, and in their communities and support um, the culture and everything else that we value around uh, Angus. Uh, so in a nutshell, we're all about developing innovation, creating well-paid jobs and, and helping the people of Angus. And I'm joined tonight by uh, Lois and Emily, and I'll, I'll uh, ask them to introduce themselves, if that's all right, Virginia. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Absolutely, Lois, Emily. Great to uh, have you on board. Uh, Lois, do you, you want to go first, maybe? Yeah, so I'm Lois, I'm the Business Support Officer here at SPAC, and um, provides our wraparound support, um, advice and guidance to all our tenants. Uh, we're hoping, you know, helping them grow, develop, engage with Bank University, um, and yeah, see them prosper here on the island. Perfect. And I'm Emily, I'm the Outreach and Community Manager here at MSPAC, so that means I'm responsible for the events that we have here, taking MSPAC on tour, so you might have seen us on Bangor High Street recently, um, and the skills and outreach work we do with schools as well, so some of you may have been here recently with your little ones to Club Sparky, and if not, please feel free to join us at the next one, where we try and inspire young people for the jobs that are coming up. Well, it's fantastic. I can feel your enthusiasm from here, Emily. Uh, so, so Anglesey, Anglesey Free, uh, Freeport. Now, uh, it's been really, really exciting news. The Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, uh, his first visit to Wales was here to Anglesey. He flew in by a helicopter to Aria Valley. Uh, he spent the Wednesday evening seeing a, a lot of the, um, a lot of the pilots and a lot of the uh, search and rescue, the cadets, uh, um, BAE Babcock, uh, BAE Systems, and the, um, uh, and the choir actually. Uh, the wives, uh, the wives choir as well, uh, and so he had a fantastic uh, Wednesday evening um, at Aria Valley, and then on the Thursday he came to Hollyhead 
uh, and was with um, Stella Lyon and the Anglesey Council, and we and also the First Minister and uh, Mark Drakeford as well. And we had the um, the Secretary of State for Wales, David T C Davis. So it was a, a huge, uh, huge celebration, and it's something I've been working on uh, for the last three years. I set up and I chaired the Anglesey Freeport Bidding Consortium. I've mentioned um, Anglesey our bid for Anglesey to be a free port more than 30 times in the House of Commons chamber and um, so much so that um uh, one of the ministers, uh, Penny Penny Morden, she's dubbed uh, Thursdays um, instead of um, being business questions. They're now Freeport Thursdays, and many ministers have been wandering around Westminster wearing our fantastic Anglesey Freeport jackets, and we've got our Anglesey Freeport bags as well. And we've also got lots and lots of red dragons. Uh, so it's been a really, really exciting, exciting few weeks, and it's been great to celebrate it with uh, with so many people across the island. But I wanted to set up these uh, these Facebook lives so in order to answer your questions. And I know we've got we've had lots of questions that have been emailed in. Thank you, Jochen Val, for that. And we've also got lots of questions coming through now. And of course, if you have questions um, after this, after this Facebook Live, it'll be available for the next 30 days for you to be able to watch it and share it. Uh, but please do email me, drop me an email, and I'll be happy to uh, happy to reply uh, reply to you. So um, we are it's taken three years, three years of, of hard work. Um, there are two free ports in Wales. We've got our bid in the north and we've got a bid in the south, the Celtic bid. Um, they're both very much um, based on uh, net zero and innovation. And that's something certainly that Pradera will be talking about. Um, there are eight free ports in England. Uh, there are two green free ports in Scotland. And the, the benefits of a free port, they really do encourage um, investment. They encourage investment into an area and particularly in areas that need uh, leveling up. Anglesey has got one of the lowest GVAs, gross value added, of any constituency in the UK. And um, I've certainly been working hard to ensure that we have that investment. Uh, we've had 17 million pounds from the leveling up fund, 16 million pounds from the shared prosperity fund, 20 million pounds for the refurbishment of the um, Holyhead Breakwater it was announced in the budget a few weeks ago. Uh, the Inland Border Facility in Holyhead, that's 200 uh, fantastic, uh, good quality jobs. All um, six bids from our Community Renewal Fund uh, bid 2.7 million pounds uh, was successful. And I know Pradera and his team have been very instrumental in making sure um, a lot of that those funds have been uh, used to support employment and uh, encourage uh, encourage businesses on the island, particularly relating to the Welsh language. And we've had almost a million pounds from the Safe and Streets Fund to invest uh, in, um, in, in ensuring our, our streets are safer. But I won't stop there. Um, I, I'm absolutely delighted that we've got Freeport status. I'm gonna be keeping going to uh, do everything I can to ensure that we get space in the ground for Wilver. And one of my next guests is actually going to be the energy, uh, the um, nuclear minister, Andrew Bowie. Uh, for the first time, we've got a nuclear minister and he's agreed to do uh, one of my Facebook lives over the next few weeks. So do please watch out, watch out for that. So for um, Pideri, so what role, what role will MSPARC play in the Anglesey Freeport and how will the people of Anglesey benefit from the Freeport status? Oh, thanks, Virginia. I, I really appreciate the work, the hard work that you've been um, putting into the bid as well, and the team around the bid, uh, the partners, the state now, the council, and, and everyone uh, has been a collective to get us uh, to get to see. So I really appreciate that, Virginia. Um, in terms of MSPAC, we're looking forward to delivering the innovation part, really. Um, innovation, if you look at the prospectus for a free pot, it plays a vital part. It's at the heart of what a free pot is. You can imagine goods coming in and components coming in then what, what do you do with them and, and how can you be innovative how can we develop new products here attract companies here perhaps to uh, establish and export that value that knowledge if you like then uh, all over all over the globe from uh, from wales or from anglesey so uh, for us it's all about uh, generating knowledge ip generating good, nice new ideas and creating jobs, ultimately, uh, Virginia. It's about um, developing companies who are looking to grow, uh, be, they, um, be they in digital, be they in manufacturing, uh, be they in the energy sector. And that's the focus of the free pot, of course, is, is the energy sector and being on the energy island. So how can we generate that value and add value to, to components, to knowledge, to ideas coming into the science park? And then, of course, we get the benefits, the jobs, the skills, and so forth. Um, so we are really looking forward to being at the heart of innovation in the bid and linking people like the uh, partners from STEM, now that you mentioned, to our fantastic university, 
in Bangor and, and helping to kind of generate these ideas, the, these new kind of IP rich companies that we can then add value to their products coming in and, and export them across the globe. That's right. And Pridera, you and I, we're working together to have, a, there's going to be a couple of events on the island to ensure that um, businesses and, 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 and entrepreneurs and everybody really can understand how they can work um, to actually capitalise and benefit from the island having free port status. I've been taking a lot of companies around the island. I'm sure a few people saw me uh, last Friday up in uh, up in the north of the island, up at, uh, uh, up at Wilbur and um, uh, I went to the Roscork site and to, to, to Blueberries into the market there in Amlock. So taking a lot of companies, international companies around the island. We've had more than 40 uh, letters of endorsement from international companies these are companies that are looking to invest on the island um, if, because we have freeport status it's not about taking business or investment from the rest of the wales this is companies that are looking to invest specifically on anglesey and as Pradari said um, we're known as energy island we've got wind wave solar tidal hydrogen and and hopefully new nuclear at wilver and the companies that i've been taking around their average salary their average salary of these companies is double that of the average salary here on Anglesey. So there's a lot of opportunities there for existing businesses and our existing people. And, and, and this is what we really what we want to do. And um, my dad had to leave Wales to find work. And I'm just determined that other people do not have to leave Wales. And I want to make sure that our young people have got um, have got good quality careers and those careers can be right here on the island. I did an um, Anglesey Skills Day in Westminster. And it was fantastic to have all these apprentices from the island actually come to Westminster and, and to really, for me, to showcase that the talent that we have uh, with all these ministers, and we had the, the Secretary of State for Education came along, the Secretary of State for Wales, all these ministers could see this fantastic talent that we have. And I think the, the role I want to do is to ensure that, that, that we keep that talent on the island. And the best thing that I can do for the Welsh language is jobs. Um, if we don't have any jobs, we, the, the, um, the, the Welsh um, speakers will leave. And when I went to see, um, Hinkley, Hinkley C recently and Hinkley B, there was a couple of um, uh, young apprentices, one was from uh, Gwyneth and one was actually from Anglesey, both Welsh speakers, and it was such a shame for me to see these young people having to work so far away from their, their homes and their communities and their families and they're taking the Welsh language with them so if we can have we can work together to ensure that uh, we've got some good quality jobs and I would I'd say it's not only young people and I was actually at two sisters on on Friday and it's absolutely terrible news that two sisters has closed with the loss of over 700 jobs um, but 400 of those people are, are 24 years old and, and, and younger but there's there are some you know older people and this is an opportunity to have jobs for, for for everybody it's not just about young people it's about people changing career or or, or looking to do um different different things um so um emily in terms of um skills um that's obviously a key part of our, our free port ensuring that um, the people on the island have actually got the skills to take up some of these fantastic jobs that Pradera was talking about. So if we're working together um, to make sure we've got these skills and then we've got these companies coming, it really is, is ensuring that we work as a team. How, how are you working to make sure that that happens? Definitely. Well, I'll come at that from, from two angles, if I may. So first, yeah. as MSPAC, we ourselves are developing our skills programme at the minute. We've got a new venture called uh, Skills Spark which we're working from primary to secondary school to 16 plus to ensure people have those uh, STEM skills, science, technology, engineering and maths. And to make sure, as you said, Virginia, that people are aware that there's opportunities on the island. If young people don't develop these skills now with the hope that there's a job when they grow up, then they're going to not have those skills when we need them. So it's important that we start targeting young people and we're doing that as NSPAC now. What we also have um, is our skills academy where we take people who, for whatever reason, might be trying struggling to get work so for example they might have a qualification but no experience or they may be one of those self-taught people who can't show you on paper that they have the qualification to do something we're working to put people like that in industry for six months to develop that experience and to make sure they go on to get employment and around 80 percent of people who take part in skills back do go on to get full-time employment afterwards so we know that it works so coming from the freeport angle we have been discussing options like this and how we can support it and use those initiatives in our experience to ensure there's opportunities for local people i think as well people can be a bit worried oh, i've never heard of a freeport so i don't know what skills there are so it's probably not for me i'll leave it but that's the conversation that we're having um, and to make sure that you know we can share what opportunities and skills people have and maybe transferable skills that people wouldn't think will transfer to the roles coming from Freeport, to make sure that people can take real advantage of those. So those are ongoing conversations we're having at the moment. 
No, that's right. It's very hard, Emily, to answer these specific questions that people have, like what exactly are jobs going to be available? And people have been sending me CVs. I'm like, no, you know, send those CVs to Moncief um, because we don't actually yet know who's going to be investing. We're showing all these companies around. We're setting up the governance now. That will actually take a few months. Uh, so I, I, I think it, I think if you think about the the energy island concept, um, it, it, we've got you know engineers in terms of construction, developers, accountants. Uh, you know, they, they're, they're, I think there'll be we're looking at 13,000 jobs that's a significant amount of different different jobs but it's very hard isn't it to be uh, to be prescriptive and I think also and um, I was in um, a couple of schools actually on Friday St Mary's in um, in Holyhead and also the um, uh, Kegelio Foundation School as well and it's seeing, seeing these young students and and talk you know it's almost like we need to be talking about it now so that they hear about it in year four year five and year six and they're thinking about what, what they want to be when they're older and it's it's great for them to have that uh, that idea that they can actually you know they can actually fulfill their goals and their ambitions and their dreams but actually right here right here on the on the island and um, so Lois a question for you um, in terms of um, MSPARC having any companies from abroad have invested and moved onto the island uh, so this is this you've sort of um what you're about to talk about epitomizes what we hope will happen more and more so you m spark has experienced it already so how's that actually worked and how will these companies that have come from abroad and invested here how will they then again be able to benefit from freeport status yeah so we've had a lot of um, so we have a program called soft landing package so we offer that to um you know tenant companies that are looking to come over become a tenant become part of our ecosystem so we've actually had two companies from ireland come over the past um 18 months um, set up specifically for a couple of reasons with skills was one of them and they were desperate to grow the team here in North Wales um, and get that connection to Bank University because of the School of Computer Science and Electronic Engineering um, so we have Capfentis who are into um, working with large brands so with an um, integrating data analysis um, so it was a perfect connection with the course that's run and offered at Bank University so our role then was to support them with linking them with the right graduates at the right time. So we held a skills expo here at um, MSPAG last year. And through that, two actual graduates um, directly got employed for that event. Um, we actually got another event coming up at the end of April 27th um, here as well, another skills expo. So it would be great, again, for any employers who are looking you know, to employ and grow, but also as well you know, for any graduates, job seekers looking connect with employers here to come along to that um, but yeah so that was really great for them we've also got micron agritech who again came over from dublin last year um, and they came over via a hack that we ran um, and it was about research connecting with again with bank university but with local vets as well in the area and um, to help them develop their, their app um, so again it's, so it'll be quite exciting to see what, what more benefits you know we can offer in social companies that want to come over with a free port status Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Lois. And then we've had a few questions coming in, Pradari. Um, make it your business. I'm a, a, a group who um, encourage female entrepreneurs. They're saying, will MSPARC need to expand to accommodate businesses coming into the Freeport? Will you have to expand, Pradari? What, what are your plans? Uh, we, 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 we certainly will, Virginia. Um, we are at 93% occupancy in this building, so we are bursting at the seams with those jobs that we want to see, which is great news. So um, to, to, to further kind of develop that impact that we want, I, I see no other option for us really than to, than to expand and to collaborate as well with the local authority, for example, they have uh, business units and so forth. So we can collaborate, we'd like to see companies come in here, germinate and grow and, and, and even you know, open offices in Frankenny or, or whatever it may be. So it's not just about this site, but I think to answer the question, we will definitely need to, uh, need That's to... good to hear. That's good to hear, Jerry. And then there's a question here from Frederica, Frederica John. When do you expect Freeport to commence um, on Anglesey? Also, do you think the council will now prioritise affordable housing to enable the future generations to remain on the island? Yeah, absolutely, Frederica. We do need to have investment into um, social and affordable housing. 
um, there's a real shortage here on the island. And I think it's, it's paramount that we've got these um, you know, young people uh, we are out starting out on, on life and we want to be able to ensure that they've got uh, good quality um, homes in, in places that they actually want to live. So I would expect that we will actually see some investment and, and more uh, more affordable housing and, and to prioritise that. Uh, Michael, Michael Garner, he says, when will companies start investing? Oh, Michael, I'm on the case. I'm absolutely on the case. Please be assured I'm doing everything I can. I have regular meetings um, with, uh, I brought GE, G, Hitachi round. Um, I've had meetings with EDF, um, Bechtel, Westinghouse, uh, Rolls-Royce. Um, I've had meetings with the Koreans, um, just so many companies. I either bring them around the island or I'm having uh, meetings in Westminster. Uh, so doing everything I can to ensure that we can get um, investment uh, here, right here on, on Anglesey. Um, the question for Pradery, energy and low carbon energy features strongly in the proposal. Uh, what did MSPARC do in this field and what are the opportunities for the region? Yeah, we're on the uh, Energy Island. So um, we've been working as part of the Energy Island Initiative, Virginia, to drive that impact that we want in the region. So mm -hmm. on we have a low carbon team um, here, here headed up by Dr. Debbie Jones. And that team delivers uh, a number of projects. Uh, they support strategic development developers on the island, just like yourself, probably in Virginia, to um, to embed themselves in the local community and to 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 kind of progress through the various consensus processes and to deliver those economic impacts, community benefits, and perhaps that we're looking from the larger energy projects on the island. So our team is working with, with those developers, but they're also working with SMEs to understand their own carbon footprints and to understand how they can lower their emissions and save on, on cost. And with, with, with the cost of, uh, of running a business these days, that's quite an important uh, part of us to play in that role. We were looking forward to the free part. I think the opportunities are wider, aren't they? We've got some fantastic developments on the island like Modern Ice, uh, who are looking to bring in um, inward investments uh, from across the globe, some fantastic manufacturers and so on. How can we then, as MSPAC, support uh, those developers to secure that inward investment, but also to, to um, multiply that, if you like, by making sure that we've got the skills and that we've got the investment coming in as well and linkages then to the university, should they need a particular kind of expertise in ocean science or its sciences, for example, and we're able to make those linkages for those companies moving in. So there's a whole host of, of things that we could do, and we're, we're very lucky that we have a team around energy, if you like, around low carbon energy that's dedicated to, to looking after that particular sector. If no, actually, sorry, I go for it. Yeah, actually, recruiting in that team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you go on MSPAC social media now, you will see uh, four opportunities ranging from low carbon officers to degree apprentices, all within our equity low carbon team. Excellent, very good pitch there. <laughs> Send your CVs in, please. <laughs> but just following on from that, Pagari, I went to see a Mona Lifting in Clangevny recently, and they've just installed solar panels actually on their roof. And they've um, a group, Clangevny No Men, I've been working with some of the money from the, the, the CRF, the Community Renewal uh, uh, Fund, uh, in terms of helping companies across Anglesey uh, be, be net zero. And uh, Mona Lifting were, were showcasing. Uh, their, their, their solar panels, but they're, they're working with them. Um, I think it's more than 15 companies, the likes of um, Red Boat Ice Cream in Vermaris and, and various other companies. And I think it, it, there's so many businesses on the island that really are, are leading the way in terms of their business model and how they're investing and supporting their, their, their staff and the direction of their companies um, to deliver net zero uh, to such an extent that um, my Anglesey day in Westminster in October, I'm hoping to work with the uh, work with the uh, MSPARC and, and colleague Menai and actually showcasing some of the, the, the amazing things that the businesses are doing here already on the island. And I think it would be great for the companies that are coming to invest to actually learn from, from us. And I think we'll have very, very high standards as we should in terms of the, 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 the companies that will be moving here. Um, Emily, um, the free port should amplify the opportunities to support the Welsh language. Can you elaborate on how we might deliver these opportunities? Well, I think you've said one of them yourself, Virginia, which is simply to have the jobs here to ensure we don't lose those Welsh speakers. But I think we also need to make it apparent that it isn't a sort of 
something that's brought in from the UK and, and planted in Wales. This is a Welsh freeport, so everything should be bilingual as we do it here at MSPAC, and I know you do your interactions. Have the Welsh language apparent and visible and given the equal status that English language has on everything. Encourages people that little bit more to feel that this belongs to them and encourage more Welsh people to take those job opportunities as well. Yeah, fantastic. And um, I must say, I was talking to um, the Inland Border Facility, the team there in, in Hollyhead, and they're very keen to um, encourage their, their staff to have Welsh lessons and actually to integrate in the community. They've reached out to me to ask what sort of charities they can support. Can they help with um, sort of litter clearing up and beach cleaning and things like that? So a lot of companies already that are investing here are very keen to um, to actually get in part of the community. And that, of course, means uh, the Welsh language, which is so, so important, uh, so important here. Here. Um, so we've got a, we've got a couple more um, minutes. Um, in terms of um, a lot of the questions that come through, I think people are concerned about um, the, the the salaries. Just ensuring that this is a you know that these are good quality um, uh, good quality uh, careers. And Pradeer, what comfort can you give people that uh, not only will they be good quality jobs, but those jobs will do everything that we can to ensure that those jobs go to local people here on the island. Absolutely, I think we're all from the team, if you like, the three port team, aiming to retain and keep the benefits as local as we can. From our perspective here in MSBAC, I know you said that the, the developers that you're talking to offer, on average, a double the wage of, of, of the average on the island, which is fantastic. But from an MSBAC perspective at the moment, we're not quite doing that. But on average, a wage of someone working in MSBAC is about five grand higher than the Welsh average. So there are good jobs in Epsbach, but we've also got work to do, Virginia, uh, on the gender um, pay gap. We've got to make sure that women show an interest in, in science, technology and, and in enterprise. And that's why I was pleased to partner up with you, Virginia, on the recent uh, day that we had celebrating women in business here. So there are great jobs already. We know from South Virginia that there's more to go than those developers uh potential developers coming onto the island i'm sure uh pay well as well and we're all on the same page in terms of needing to show that local impact uh, and that's what's driving the the consortium behind the three pots at the end of the day so uh yeah quite buoyant and, and quite uh positive about that outlook hopefully no, absolutely. And then just to reiterate that it's the whole island, it's the whole island that will be benefit from free port status. And the, the four main sites are um, Gerwin and M Spark, um, the Roscork site up in the north of the island, and then Park Cubby uh, and the um, Stena Lion site in, uh, in Hollyhead. So those are the sort of for key tax and custom sites, but it's the whole island that will benefit. And actually not only the whole island, the whole, the whole of North Wales will, will benefit uh, quite frankly. Um, I went to the Airbus recently and there were 51 people working at Airbus in Broughton who actually live on Anglesey and they commute. Uh, so I think we might we might, we might might see um, them benefit as well. And I, um, I work very closely with some of my North Wales um, uh, uh, MPs, colleagues, uh, Robin Miller and, and Sarah Atherton and, and, and many others to actually work on this bit because they'll be benefiting from the whole sort of supply chain um, to this and um, we've got a couple um, a couple of um, minutes uh, left what I would like to say if you want more information um, please do do email me uh, if you would like to put in your CV I would send it to Moncia they are just um, collating CVs at the moment it is going to be a bit of a time whilst we get the government sorted out and a lot of it will depend on um, uh, some of the, uh, uh, the companies investing. In the near term, what we're seeing is some of the companies, existing companies on the island are all already gearing up and hopefully you'll see um, some of the sites on the island, I don't know, like the, um, uh, the, the Woolworth site, say, in Hollyhead, hopefully you'll see some sort of changes there. So we, we will start to, to feel some, some tangible uh, change here on the island, but we're, we're probably looking um, in the near term around sort of three and a half thousand jobs in the near term uh, rising to sort of an additional 13,000 jobs and those will take some 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 time uh, so if you would like to find out um, more about how you as a business or an individual can benefit from the free port status again drop me an email I'm keeping a, a details of um, so that so Pradera and I can invite you along to this event that we're planning to hold at MSPARC it will be a essentially a a presentation as to what a, slightly more sort of detail as to what a free port is and an opportunity for a specific Q&A relating to your business so please 
do uh, do stay in touch. I haven't got a Freeport Live next week, and I've got one the week after. I've got the um, the deputy chair of the Conservative Party, Lee Anderson. If you Google him, uh, I think uh, he'll definitely be one to watch. And then after that, I've got Andrew Barry, who is the nuclear minister. My Freeport uh, Facebook lives are normally on a on a Tuesday. It was just uh, unusually uh, today on a Monday. And then I would um, a couple of other things I wanted to add. Uh, firstly, Bethan, Bethan Davis, my uh, fantastic chief of staff, won the equivalent of the, um, the parliamentary Oscars uh, and she's got a fantastic award. Uh, so big, big shout out and a clong of backyard. I congratulations to you, uh, Bethan. And then a few things happening over the week weekend. Um, Easter Sunday, I'll be at St Cubby's Church in Hollyhead uh, doing the reading there. On Sunday from 11.30, um, the Hollyhead lifeboat, the RNLI team are up at Chem Ice, up at the pier. There's also Coast Watch and Sea Kayaking and the local Sea Swimming Club um, and music from Keith Fitton and his band. And then we've got this Anglesey Open Studios. Um, I don't know whether it's um, opened on, on Saturday. I've been to some of them already, um, but they're all around the island and it's a great opportunity to support some of our, our local talent here. And I, I'd like to thank Mike Gould and his team uh, for working so hard to, uh, to make, this, uh, make, make this such a success. Um, but I wish you all a lovely, lovely evening and a big um, thank you to Puderi and Emily and Lois uh, for, for explaining so eloquently uh, as to their, their, how hard they're working to ensure that uh, Angle Sea Freeport is a success. And I look forward to um, seeing many of you across the island. Please do come up and say hello, speak to me in Welsh um, and uh, really look forward to seeing you over the next couple of weeks. Take care, Diochenbao. Thank you.